Well, I'll give you voter su- I, I will give you voter suppression. You just have to sit down, please. Sit down. I didn't call you. I didn't call you. I didn't call you. I'll give you voter suppression. That moment, President Trump telling reporter April Ryan to sit down sent shockwaves around Washington. In her new book, Black Women Will Save the World, April Ryan describes the challenges of being the longest serving and sometimes only black female White House correspondent. And she speaks with black women now about how they were able to overcome and thrive in a system designed to keep them out. And joining us now, Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief for the GRIO, April Ryan. April, congratulations on the book. Thank you for writing it. And we're so glad that you've come here to talk about it. I want to hear what you heard from the women you talk about in your book uh, about how they learned to overcome a system desi- designed to really stack things against them. What's some of the best advice you got? Some of the best advice that I received from some of those women, Mika, uh, was keep going no matter what, because a community needs, a church needs, a schoolhouse needs, the home needs us. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the biggest pieces. And one of those people I talked to happened to be Stacey Abrams, who is fighting for her political life in Georgia right now. And um, I talked to her about her win about changing Georgia from red to blue. And that's one of the reasons why she's fighting now, because she was a winner. And a lot of times we fight and we get the wins, but people do not recognize it or mark the moment. That's one of the reasons why she's in this fierce battle now, while the, why the world is watching her, because she did the unthinkable. And that's what a lot of black women do, the unthinkable. And it makes, we make it seem like it's no big deal because we do it with such grace. And we've been doing it since the inception of black women in this nation. Mm. Talk about the challenges you faced and the unthinkable things that you've been able to accomplish. Hmm. Me, Joe. Okay. (laughs) Um, Some of the unthinkable things. Making 25 years. Could you imagine a couple of years ago when all of that fire was happening? I did, I was working, not knowing that 25 years would be here, that I would be named the longest serving black woman journalist in the White House history. Um, under unthinkable, un, un, unimaginable and unthinkable circumstances, um, I made it through. And that's what we do. We, we, we see what's ahead of us and just keep moving because we have to. And it's not about me and for a lot of these women, um, black women who just keep working and keep marching and rise and no one marks it, we do it because we have to and it's intrinsic within our spirit. April, I want to know what you were thinking when President Trump told you to sit down. Like, tell me what you were really thinking. Um, <laughs> oh, and, and, and is that is that one of the reasons you've written this book? Tell us why you wrote the book. Yeah, Mika. But what were you um, thinking? So, well, let me tell you first. Let, I'm going to give you, I'm, I'm not going to spoil the, the, the tease. But okay. first of all, I wrote this book because a couple okay. of years ago, many black women were vilified. Many Mm -hmm. strong black women were vilified. And the only way you change the narrative is by writing your own story and telling the truth. And this is why I'm speaking uh, about black women today, from Maxine Waters to Stacey Abrams to Keisha Lance Bottoms Mm -hmm. to uh, Kamala Harris to so many others. And, you know, I was vilified. I was one of those women. And that was one of the most ugliest moments I have ever seen or felt in my life. I'm a grown woman, a mother. I could be a grandmother. I, I have a standing in the community. And for someone to tell me to sit down as if I was a school child, it was awful. But in that moment, you have to remember, it was four years ago. We were talking about the midterm elections at that time. And I was asking yeah. about voter suppression, and it was off mic. And I said, sir, could you talk about voter suppression? I think I was second two rows or three rows in. He could hear me. And off mic, he said, yeah, I, I, I'll tell you about voter suppression. I got your voter suppression. So I stood up. I stood up because he acknowledged it as he called on someone else. And then he proceeds to tell me to sit down. And I'm like, wait a minute, but you called on me. And then the next thing you know, um, he continues to tell me to sit down, sit down. And then the next day, uh, they had pulled Jim Acosta's badge and he, some, a reporter had asked, mm-hmm. sir, um, who's next to have their badge taken away? And my name came out of his mouth. I'm a loser, I'm nasty, but I wasn't. Um, That was a moment that really sticks with me and is left residue. No person should be uh, treated in that way by anyone. 
The new book is entitled Black Women Will Save the World. And they will. Uh, it's officially out today. April Ryan, thank you very much. Thanks Congratulations, so much, April. April. Thank and you. And that does it for us this morning. <laughs>